the Falcon. You know, trouble can start any place. The only difference about New York is that it has more people to start it. Tend the bar a second, will you, Danny? trouble starts, a lot of it seems to end up here in Washington, where orders begin at the top. But sometimes it's just one citizen coming to ask for help. And that's when you rediscover a simple fact, that our government's strength is in its heart, not in its muscle. Well, that's the last item. Yeah, I guess that ties it all up. It's a good job, Mike, and a tough one. We deserve a little rest. Rawlings. Who? In the lobby? Yes, absolutely. Send her right up. Pretty? Beautiful. Oh, let's stick around. I want you to meet her. It's Mrs. Usher. Oh, Lieutenant Jack Usher's mother? Yeah. The man who saved my life and my command and died doing it. They gave him the Medal of Honor. I ever tell you the story, Mike? No more than a hundred times. Yeah, I guess I have. Come in. Well, come right in, Mrs. Usher. How do you do, General Rawlings? How do you do? Oh, uh, this is Mr. Waring. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you sit down? Thank you. Now, young lady, what can we do for you? General Rawlings, you said that if I was ever in trouble, it's my daughter, Carol. She's run away with a man named Vic Killiman. Vic? He's the top gun for the syndicate in the East. The paper said yesterday he killed one Danny Poggin. Now he went into hiding. She took my insurance check, but she'd never take anything for herself. I know that. She's a good girl. It was just to help a man she thinks she's in love with. A criminal. She's so young, barely 19. I tried to stop her from seeing him, but I couldn't. Well, Mrs. Usher, I, I think the police are better qualified to... Please, not the police. If they find Carol with Killerman, they'll arrest her for helping him. Or worse. Mrs. Usher, you know there's nothing that I wouldn't do to help you, but uh, I, I think this is a job for the civil authorities. I, I just have no jurisdiction to act. should have known. It was just that I... I didn't know where to turn. Please forgive me. I'm happy to have met you, Mr. Waring. One moment, Mrs. Usher. This check that your daughter stole, was it a government check? Why, yes, it was this year's payment on my son's government insurance. $984. Since when don't we have the authority to track down thieves who steal government checks? You're right, Mike. We should find that check. And due to certain aspects in this case, I think you ought to consider it your assignment. Thanks. 
Mike. Good luck. Thank you, General Rawlings. You're very welcome. Thank you, Mr. Waring. I'll be seeing you. Good luck, Mike. Who are you kidding, Sophie? There isn't a bum on 8th Avenue who would risk his stomach with that stuff. <laughs> Mike Waring. Don't tell me the Falcon's back on his old beat. Yes and no. What have you got for sore feet? A seat. I hear you had some excitement in here, Soapy. Yeah, and I hear you've been spending all afternoon milking pigeons for a line on Vic Killerman. It's a rough on the feet. Yeah. Everybody's playing clam. People like to keep breathing. Vic Killerman's on the lamb. Eh, not far. Where it is, he figures his connections will smooth things over. If so, he'll be back. But he's hiding close and waiting. How about the girl with him? Onions. How I hate to peel onions. Her name is Carol Usher. Look, I got enough trouble. If I testify against Vic, the syndicate's gonna be real unhappy. If I don't, Danny Poggin's brother will break my neck. Not to mention what the cops would do. So, get off my back, will you? What about Danny Poggin's brother? Ike, you keep on, you'll meet him. Why? Because Ike Poggin's out to get Vic for shooting Danny. He's been tearing the town apart trying to find him. You get in Ike's way, he'll unwind your clock. Sounds like a bad boy. Yeah, well, he'll do the one comes along. Well, that's all very interesting, Soapy, but it's not what I'm after. I've got an idea that someone in this town knows where Vic is hiding. Maybe you. No. Honest, I don't know. You've got a bad face, Soapy. It wiggles when you lie to me. Mike, I, I swear, I don't know. Honest, look, look, I told you. Well, I, I don't know if it'll mean anything anyways. Try me. Well, Vic used to go with Henry Preston. Who? Henry had a Preston, Henry for short. She works as a stocking model over at Frederick's. She was crazy about Vic for years. Frederick's, huh? I don't want to have to come back to see you, Soapy. I don't like to see you cry. So long, slave. Oh, excuse me, Miss Preston. Uh-uh. There's a law against it. Besides, her boyfriend's a pug. Not a dog? Some people think so. I'm Henrietta Preston. Call me Henry. I'm Mike Waring. Call me Mike. I've heard the name. Sit down, Mike. Thanks. And, um, tell me what you want to know about Vic. Oh, brains, too, huh? Or you're just a good guesser. You decide. So you still keep his picture. Look, if you expect me to play coy, forget it. I was Vic's girl for five years. You still love him? I hate him. Oh, the picture? I keep that just to remind me not to make the same mistake again. But well, don't get me wrong. Vic's a wonderful guy. What? I know, he's a gunman. But to me, he was everything a girl could want. When he fell out of love with me, he said so. Straight out. Maybe that's why I hate him so much. Sorry. Forget it. Can you help me find him? I could. But I won't. Look, Henry, I'm not a cop. I couldn't arrest him if I wanted to. Well, then why do you want... I'm just after the girl that's with him, Carol Usher. She's just a baby, so you know what she's letting herself in for. Yeah. 
My job is to find her and take her home before she gets involved or hurt. Now, will you help me? Will you call the cops on him? You have my promise. Well, Vic bought a little country place about three years ago. It was our, our hideaway. I love that place. Made me want to become a farmer. That's silly? No. I still do. You know, I'll bet I'm the only model in New York that knows how to raise rutabagas. Where is it, Henry? 18 miles out the West Highway. Take the dirt road clear to the end. You'll see it. You know, there's a lot of money in rutabagas. Thanks, Henry. Is she your girl, Mike? No. Then if you get back, call me? Sure. Stand still. Who are you? I'm Mike Waring. Let me guess. You're Ike Poggin. Yeah. Turn around. Back inside. Don't be scared of me. I ain't gonna shoot you. I won't even hurt you if you tell me where I can find Vic Killerman. <laughs> All right, sweetheart. I don't know but what I'd prefer to have you a little bit stubborn. Phone for a doctor. Hello, operator. Send someone up to the model's dressing room for Miss Preston. Yes, she's been hurt. They'll be here in a minute. Henry, you didn't tell Ike Poggin where Vic was, did you? Please try to understand, Henry. Did you tell Ike where Vic is? Or about his farm. He hit me. I, I, Henry. I'm sorry, Angel. I'll try to make it up to you sometime. Kitty, 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 kitty. There you are, you little rascal. You know, you're going to get hurt if you don't keep out the road. Hey, you! Uh, you! Hello, mister. You want to buy some worms? No. Where do I find Vic Killerman's place? Never heard of him. Everybody's heard of Vic. He's been all over the papers and radio. Well, I, I don't read the papers, and I ain't got no radio. Well, you got a good nose. You could smell out a guy like Vic Killerman. I know he's got a place around here somewhere. Mm, not by that name, he ain't. Well, Vic is about 6'2". Sandy hair, a little mustache, dresses rather well. Does that ring any bells? Well, there's a couple of fellas like that. One has a place on Meadowbrook Road, another has a cottage down the way a few miles, and, and left where you turn on the dirt road. Thanks. It's about time. I was just coming down to your place to get you. Dinner's ready. Mmm. Fresh air, good food, and you. You know, you better be careful, honey. I may never want to go back. Oh, Vic, I wish you meant that. Mmm. Here now. Here now, young lady. You're just leading up to a cold dinner. Or a burned one. Hmm? My biscuits. <laughs> You'll spill a bit 
potato. Well, spill them. Oh, Vic, now let go of me and sit down. No. Look, sit. No. You sit down first. No, if you don't stop getting fresh with this cook, you're not going to have any dinner. And I may as well warn you, if you don't flatter my cooking and rave over these biscuits, we are through. Mmm, mmm. You could write poetry about these. Hands on the table, Vic. Good evening. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. Fortunately. Which side are you wearing it? Left. You don't look like a policeman. I'm not. I didn't come up here for you, Vic. Oh, well, now that leaves Carol, doesn't it? Me? You better let me take her, Vic. Ike Pogger may be here any minute. Ike? I think he knows about this place. If he does, he's not far behind. Well, thanks for the warning, but I'll need my gun. You're going to have it after Carol and I leave. No. You better come with me, Carol. There'll be gunplay if Poggin shows up. I don't care. My place is with Vic. There's only room in a coffin for one. Besides, there's a pretty wonderful person waiting for you at home. Look. Look, I, I love my mother. She's been good to me, but I've got to live my own life. She has to realize that. She does. But she wants you to live it, not throw it away on a killer. He only killed to save his own life. Look, we love each other. I don't care what he's done. I'm not leaving him. That goes for me, too. Swell. You're going to make her stick around until Poggin gets here. You're in the worst kind of trouble, Vic. Why drag her into it? Perhaps because I think I'm not in any trouble yet. You're still wanted for murder. Does that make you an eligible bachelor? That's a misunderstanding. Well, at least let me take Carol with me before... Don't. You'd never make it. Then let's finish our dinner. It's a shame to let it spoil. You go ahead. Carol can eat when she gets home. I'm staying. The lady says no. You better change your mind, Vic. I don't want to use force. You know, I bet you would at that. Better oblige the man, honey. Vic. Carol. All right, Vic. If you say so, I'll go with him. Vic. Nice going, honey. Lock the back door. Pull down the blinds. We've had enough unexpected visitors tonight. Put your hands on the table. What now? I'm going to finish my dinner. This concludes our program of music. Want some music. And now for the news. The big news is local today, as the manhunt for Victor Killerman was suddenly put into high gear. Killerman, who was a well-known criminal, alleged to be the top executioner for an Eastern Syndicate, shot and killed Daniel Poggin day before yesterday, then disappeared. He is thought to be hiding somewhere in the vicinity, and the police dragnet is now in progress on the full scale, with orders to bring Killerman in, dead or alive. Vic? Vic, what does it mean? It means he's finished. He's just been thrown to the wolves. Hey, shut up. Let me think. Honey, you better start packing. We gotta get moving. You can't take her with you, not now. Oh, yes, I can. But man, it's quiet. Suicide. I gotta figure this out. some pretty nice things to say about you, Vic. Henry? Yeah, she would. Henry's the best. Crazy about being a farmer. Well, if she was right, you're not the type to ruin the life of the girl you love. <laughs> Brother, you're persistent, I'll say that. Vic, you 
Shut up. I'm fed to the teeth with your talk. Just get all the bandages and tape you can from the medicine chest. I've had a little experience with bullets. Hadn't I better do that instead of her? How good's your word? It's good. No tricks? No tricks. Finish your packing. No, no, he's gonna do it. It's all right. Go ahead. How does it look bad? It's bad enough. Here, you better bite on this. Oh. You're lucky it missed your spine. Mm. Ike never could shoot. He shot all right. You haven't got a chance unless you get to a hospital. Even then, I'll I don't... make it. I'll make it. With Carol? The odds are all against you, Vic. If you make a run for it and stop at the doctor, they'll catch you. And if you don't, this wound will kill you. This is the payoff. Even if Carol helps you get a little further, the end will be the same for you. For her, a bullet from a cop's gun, maybe. Or a few years in prison. She'd wind up living the life of his next con. No, they wouldn't. They'd have to. You've been around, Vic. You know what happens to a girl in prison. Yeah. You've made her part of your life. She worships you. Whatever happens now, she's gonna hate that world that takes you away from her. She's gonna hate it so bad she can't even live in it. Shut up. I'm all ready, Vic. Is it bad? No, it's fine. Fine. We're all set to roll as soon as I take care of our friend here. You, you don't mean... Yes, I do. Time for games is over. He knows too much. You can't do that, Vic. It's murder. That's my business. Your business? That's right. I never told you about that, did I? No. No, you never told me. You better get it through your head, baby. Because you're moving fast, and anyone who tries to stop me will get this. You can't mean all this, Vic. You're sick. I'm fine. Maybe you're a little mixed up. You ought to be the one to chill this character. Here. No. Take it. No, no! Get, take it, obey me. I'm not going on the land with any dame who's afraid of guns. Besides, if you pull the trigger, I know I can depend upon you to stick by me. You're crazy, Vic. You're sick and crazy! You'll have to kill me, too, because I'm not going with you. She is not worth the bullet. Take her back to her mother where she belongs. <laughs> stolen government check in the amount of $984 recovered and returned to owner. Not my biggest case. <laughs> I'll bet Mrs. Usher would say different. Well, maybe you're right. You going somewhere for the weekend? 
Yeah, I thought I'd run up to New York. I've got a date with a girl named Henry to split a rutabaga. Henry? Rutabaga? Rutabaga? Rutabaga?